We are presently in a serious battle on the mission field. Um, there is a, a dear brother, and since we're being frank and honest tonight and calling names, named David Garrison. Uh, David Garrison is a graduate of the University of Chicago. Naturally, one of the first things that I ever did, by the way, when we speak of Clark Pennock's influence on us, we are talking about the early Pennock. And uh, the early Pennock did make a considerable impact on, on many of us. One of the first things Clark Pennock ever taught me was, anytime you're going to have a discussion with anybody, go get his doctoral dissertation and read it. Number one, he can't remember what on earth it was he said. Number two, he will have the impression that you know much more about him than you actually do. And number three, when you cite what you cite, he'll have to stand against it. And uh, he's in serious trouble. Well, I went to the University of Chicago and got the dissertation by Dr. Garrison, and I read it. Now, Garrison advocates, and this has become widespread on our Southern Baptist mission fields now, he advocates what he calls the wrinkling of time. What he means by this is it's taking too long to evangelize the world. So we need to get out there and we need to do church planning by the thousands and the thousands and thousands of house churches. Now, I don't object to a house church. Don't read me wrong. But we need all these house churches. doesn't matter who's pastor of it. As soon as you get there, identify the man or woman who is the most natural leader and tell them they're the pastor and you're ready to go. And we need these church planting movements everywhere. We have uh, tried a number of these in Bangladesh and in China, particularly where the results have been disastrous, predictably, because a small house church with no biblical understanding and a hard put to find the Gospel of John in a Bible drill, they're not going to lead to biblically based congregations. What they're going to do is to watch Benny Hinn on television and follow him. And that is exactly what has happened. The vast majority of our house church plants that we have done are now off in the name it and claim it gospel and have abandoned the New Testament faith entirely and completely. And, you know, to somebody like me who's 118 years old, Brother Kirby, um, I just shake my head and I say, how many wars you got left in you, boy? Uh, you know, here you're going to have to fight again. And uh, along with that comes the camel method of evangelization. Uh, it is a high level of insider movement situations where a person says, well, the, you ask me what I am, I'm a Muslim. Now, he's a Christian missionary appointed as a Southern Baptist missionary to the Middle East, and he tells them he's a Muslim. Well, how can he say that? Well, Muslim refers to a learner and, a, and so forth, and so he just means it that way. But that is deceptive, and God doesn't bless deceptive methodology. We are shot through right now with this methodology. Now, when I say shot through, thank God I don't mean anything like all of them. We got 4,800 missionaries. Out of that 4,800 missionaries, 3,500 of them are the finest people on the face of God's earth. I, I marvel at their sacrifice and what they do, what they're con continuing to do, and who they're leading to faith in Christ. Unfortunately, we've got about 750 that need to be brought home. Uh, either they are in this movement or else they're singing standing on the promises while they're only sitting on the premises. And uh, in either event, they need to be brought home. And uh, so we are fighting another grand battle. This one more subtle than the other one, actually. And so I ask you to pray for us as we fight the next battle. It is forever. The devil never will.